What is going on guys and welcome to today's intro video to Confederation, which happened in 1867. And Confederation was the joining of colonies in British North America. So if we look at this painting, what do you notice about this painting? Who do you notice that is missing in this painting? We're gonna discuss this a little bit further in class, but when we're looking at this painting here, it should be pretty clear he's not being represented. So from the last chapter, we know that the main British colonies were the Atlantic colonies, Canada East and Canada West, and British Columbia. Confederation was the federal union where the four British colonies joined together to form the Dominion of Canada. Notice that BC did not join the Dominion of Canada. Neither did PEI or Newfoundland. And initially, the only colonies to join the Dominion of Canada was Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and the province of Canada, which was Ontario and Quebec. And at that time, Manitoba and Alberta and Saskatchewan were not yet established. Notice the uh, coat of arms representing the four colonies. And of course, the big flag of Britain to show that Britain had its thumb on this Dominion of Canada. So what led to the idea of Confederation? So prior to Confederation, the colonies remained part of Britain. Although they operated independently of one another, they pursued policies that reflected their own best interest. Each colony had its own government of locally elected representatives, and each was dealing with political, economic, and military issues. Leaders in some of the colonies began to consider whether Confederation, a union of colonies, was the best solution to these issues. So they thought, hey, let's team up. It's gonna benefit us all. So here is a man called named George Brown. He's a Caucasian European male from England. Uh, and he had a very positive view of Confederation. So he said, but far in advance of all other advantages would be this, that union of all provinces would break down all trade barriers between us and throw open at once to all combined market of four millions of people. You in the East would send us your fish and your coals and your West India produce, while we would send you in return the flour and the grain and the meats you know, now buy in Boston and New York. So you gotta remember that cancellation of the reciprocity treaty that we talked about in chapter one. That was the free trade between the United States and British North America at the time, and that was canceled. So they were taxed heavily, so they needed to rely on each other for those economic reasons. So when we look here, what was another reason for Confederation? Well, they feared the United States. They feared a potential uh, attack from the United States. So if you look here, there was a large piece of land. So although Canada, or although British North America was a very large piece of land, they didn't have the manpower to defend against the United States at the time. So they feared uh, a, 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 an invasion. So the president of the USA at the time was Andrew Johnson, who you see here on the left. And British North America did not know what they were going to do. You also have to remember that during this time, the United States were just taking land. They were displacing indigenous people, much like the British were doing in British North America as well. So a lot of indigenous people were negatively impacted, moved from their, their land, and they weren't even considered. The United States also believed in the idea of manifest destiny. So what that means is everything in North America was their right and duty to expand throughout. They believed that it was their destiny. They, they believed that the United States posed a serious threat. So, so you can see here, this is a, a little uh, gif from uh, the movie A Night at the Museum, but that just shows the idea of manifest destiny they believed they had the right to take over all of uh, north america it was the american civil war that was going on too so there's a lot more american influence in what decided them decided for british north america to uh, form confederation so it was the american civil war so from 1861 to 1865 the united states was engaged in a civil war it was a war of succession, withdrawal from a larger group, such as a country, 
a number of southern states wanted to break away from the rest of the United States. The main reason for this separatist movement was a disagreement about slavery. Most of the northern states had abolished slavery, but southern states relied heavily on the enslaved labor for their economic growth. The southern states tried to form a separate nation where slavery would be legal. So what succession was, was withdrawal from a larger group such as a country. So during the Civil War, the South wanted to separate itself, break away from the rest of the United States. And Britain at the time declared itself neutral in this war. Neutrality meant Britain could continue to trade with both the northern and southern states, and Britain strongly condemned slavery, but it also took measures to ensure the South did not cut off the supply of cotton to British textile mills. They valued that commodity, that cotton commodity. So although they condemned slavery, they still wanted the benefit of the cotton. The large army of the northern states won the war, keeping the United States together and ending slavery. This war caused death of more than 600,000 Americans. But what was most, most significant of this civil war is it increased American resentment toward the British and therefore toward British North America for its divided support during the war. So what else led to the idea of confederation? The idea of annexation was also a legitimate concern for the British colonies. So what does annexation mean? It basically means incorporation of a territory into another territory. So absolving or just taking over the land with not in a, in a physical way, not with a war measure, but just absolving it. So this was a, uh, it's the merging of a land. So in this example, British North America feared that they would just annex part of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and the whole west coast of BC. Because you got to remember that that part right there was not part of British North America. So it was just theirs for the taking. Uh, it was Rupert's land. So this is just an interpretation of what it could have looked like if they had uh, annexed Canada. So annexation, incorporation of a territory into another territory. After the American Civil War, the very large and well-trained American army had no battles to fight. So should it choose to, it could easily dominate the colonies of British North America, where its borders were not well defended. British North America, uh, British North Americans also feared that the American pursuit of manifest destiny would put them at risk of being taken over by the United States. So we talked, so looking at this, this uh, illustration here, you have this big guy who represents uh, Britain, who's supposed to be the protector and it's just saying hey where are you going uh, we're just going to take Canada and he's just sitting back so this cartoon definitely illustrates the fear of that and looking at these guys I don't know about you but they look terrifying one more point about the US they just purchased Alaska so yeah that was a that was a big deal because it makes sense that if they have Alaska they could easily join from Alaska down to the United States and take over British North America. So obviously the US played a major role in Confederation, but what were some of the other driving factors? Well, there was the Irish nationalists. They were known also as the Fenians. And the Fenians were Irish nationalists. During this time in the United States, some Irish soldiers who had served in the American Civil War joined the Fenians and they plotted an armed invasion of British North America. The Fenians believed that the British colonies were vulnerable to an attack and planned to take them hostage until Britain granted them independence to Ireland. Many colonial colonialists feared that sentiment among the Fenian immigrants in the United States, and that would spill over into British North America. So there was a legitimate fear that these Irish nationalists, or uh, the, they wanted to be separated from um, UK at the time, Britain, um, that they would take some of the colonists, the British uh, settlers, hostage so they could get their uh, right to be removed and separated from the rest of the United Kingdom. So the British saw this as a legitimate threat, so they sent more fo forces to protect them from a potential attack by the Finians. So there was a battle, and it was right around the corner from me in a place called Ridgeway. And then the last reason for confederation was all about the money, the economic issues. The British, so England, Britain, they were investing a lot of money in defense costs 
and they wanted the colony to just become more independent. So in 1862 alone, Britain sent more than 10,000 troops to British North America to defend it from any danger posed by the American Civil War. So during the winter months, the St. Lawrence River was frozen, so soldiers could not travel inland by ship. Instead, they had to march a long way northwest through New Brunswick to reach their posts in Canada East and beyond. So picture hiking during the winter without the right technology. We didn't, it's not like they had snowmobiles from New Brunswick all the way into Quebec and Ontario during the winter. What kind of conditions do you think they would face? Brutal ones, I would imagine. So you can see in this painting here, there's a, a, a discussion going on between some of the British soldiers and the indigenous population. So there, you would imagine that the discussions there, um, there would have been language barriers and there would have been all kinds of things. So the British were just like, put your big boy pants on and take care of yourself. They were sick of investing manpower and money into this colony. They wanted them to be independent and on their own. So what I want to know is what are your thoughts? It's time to pick two of these questions and share them on the discussion board with me. The content of this video was taken from our textbook and if you'd like to read the section, then please just let me know and I'll share the textbook with you as well. So you're going to choose two of these questions and I'll post these questions on Google Classroom as well.